Hi guys, it's Danny. Okay, today I'm gonna show you how I like to water my Neo Phoenicia um, Falcara Orchid, which I potted up in the Japanese sort of way, the Kokedama way. Of course, it's not perfect, but pretty much it is different from a normal repot, let's say. Now, I filmed the process of creating this type of pot, and you have it somewhere on the screen. You can click on it to watch it if by chance you missed it. And I have to say, on that video, I got a lot of, let's call them concerned comments from a lot of you guys stating that this is too much moss and the orchid will get rotten roots in no time. So today, I just really want to show you how I watered this girl, uh, just so you rest assured that nothing bad will happen. Before I show you though, I just want to explain and demonstrate at the same time how sphagnum moss works so you have a better understanding of things and also understand how to use it and how to not use sphagnum moss. I believe this is a healthier way of learning something rather than a random person on the internet telling you you should do this and you shouldn't do that. So first of all, let's discuss sphagnum moss. Now, sphagnum moss is a well-known media for using with orchids because it retains quite a lot of moisture. It expands, it also has a texture that really holds into the moisture. I will not go into more details on the subject. I do have a video on how to actually use this guy with orchids and some things to keep in mind. You have the link uh, or the annotation on the screen right now, so if you missed it, you can pause this video and watch that really quick. Not going to many details, there is also something else that needs to be mentioned about sphagnum moss. Not only does it retain water, but it also absorbs it and distributes it evenly throughout its mass. So if what I just said is correct, this means that if I have some water, let's say, on a layer of the moss, it will be distributed evenly throughout the whole mass. Well, let's test that. So here I have a tray of water and what I will do is I will place this little pot in the water. Now the water will not fill it to the top completely, it will only fill a portion of the bottom. Now, as you can see, this moss is dry, is crunchy. There is nothing wet about it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place this pot inside the tub of water. And actually you can see it kind of floats. So I'm just gonna try to stabilize it a bit. So it stays, alrighty. And I'm gonna leave this here and I'm gonna leave the camera running, come back in 10 minutes. I'll fast forward the video and we'll see what happens to the top layer, which is dry at this moment. Okay, so about 20 something minutes have passed. Let's see how we stand with the top layer. As you can see, the pot is pretty saturated. And at the top, the sphagnum moss is moist. Now, of course, if I would have left this here for longer than this, it would have continued to soak up until the sphagnum moss could not soak any more water. So there you have it. This is the wet sphagnum moss. And if I pull it out and do this, is drenched in water. So as we saw earlier, the sphagnum moss can absorb moisture from the bottom and direct it to the top. It actually works the other way around as well. If you pour water on the top, it will actually distribute itself evenly and soak up or moisten the whole mass of the sphagnum moss. So with this in mind, all I do is get a tray of water just like this. I place the pot inside. I just keep it here just a bit, maybe 10 seconds or so. Not more because I really don't want to soak up this pot. Pull it out. Excessive water is drained. Put it back in. I don't even let it sit on a separate tray. So what will happen now is the moisture at the bottom will be absorbed through the pot to the top. Because I didn't leave it standing in water too much, it will not completely soak up. But rather moisten the sphagnum moss all the way to the top. Now let's talk about how kokedama actually works. Now you see I have a great deal of exposed sphagnum moss. The orchid is raised, there is a lot of sphagnum moss on top of the pot, so this layer of sphagnum moss will actually dry up. Now as this dries, the sphagnum moss will continue to pull moisture from the bottom 
so practically I will not have standing water on the bottom of the pot, even if I keep this in a ceramic pot which is now ventilated. There was also the issue that I did not drill any ventilation holes in the plastic pot. Well, really, I don't need to do that. I don't know if you noticed, but this particular pot is quite tiny. It's a 5 centimeter pot. If I would drill holes, it will dry up instantly. And right now, in my summertime, I need to water this orchid every 3 to 4 days, let's say. And this is because I let it completely dry out before I rewater it. So really, the extra ventilation holes are not needed for this reason. Also, this moss is not compacted. It's quite fluffy. And if you watch the video in which I repot this orchid like this, you will see that I did not press down on it. This means that the quantity of water that this pot can retain is greatly reduced. If I would compact the moss, it would hold on to a lot of water. It's pretty logical. Now, of course, watering this type of orchid in this, let's say, system of potting will depend on yourself. If you want to pour a little water on the top, go ahead and do that. If you want to spray it, you can go ahead and do that. In the wintertime, I might just spray it because wintertime is not that hot and is more humid for me. So I adapt things. But now that it's summer, I'm very, very safe to do uh, the technique that I just showed you. One more note I would like to point out is that sphagnum moss rarely, rarely stays more moist at the bottom then on the top, even in a decorative container, even without extra ventilation hose. And this is because of its capacity to absorb moisture and distribute it evenly. This usually happens with bark, charcoal, and other non-water retentive medias. With moss, however, you will rarely have trouble with the bottom part of the pot staying a lot more moist than the top. And as a last note, if what I just said is incorrect, this means that I should actually have a pool of water on the bottom of the ceramic pot because I didn't drain the orchid in a separate dish, right? Well, let's see what's on the bottom of this pot. So, there we go. The water did not fall due to gravity as it's normal because the sphagnum moss is just so water absorbent that it simply does not let the water go down. It actually pushes it up. Okay guys, I hope you found this useful. I'll end it before the workers get any more noisy. I hope this taught you something and you learned and understood something new today. I really don't like people who tell you this is right, this is wrong, but really they don't give you arguments. So that's what I'm trying to do with these videos. Okay guys, so if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also share it. If you'd like to see more videos from me regarding orchids, just subscribe to my channel. I post videos on a daily basis. You can also feel free to leave me comments, suggestions or whatever questions you have about orchids in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to orchidnature.com and there you'll find care sheets, identification sheets which are a work in progress and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another orchid video. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!